Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create a graph in Unity. We're going to automatically modify the scale of our graph based on our list of values. Let's get started. So, we have the graph here from the previous video. We're correctly displaying our values, which are represented as a list of ints. Let's go into our code, and down here on the show graph function, we currently have hard-coded the maximum of our graph, which in this case is 100f, regardless of what values it receives in here. So let's make that based on the values we receive in here instead. So we're going to cycle through all of our values and identify the highest value. So in here, let's make a for each int value in value list. And first of all, let's set the maximum default to 0f. And here, if the value is higher than the y maximum, then we're going to set the y maximum to this value. Okay, so this way we have calculated the highest possible value. In order to have a bit of a buffer on the top of our graph, let's increase the y maximum a little bit. So make y maximum equals y maximum multiplied by 1.2f. So essentially increase it by 20%. This way we don't have the highest value hugging the exact top of our graph. Now, since the rest of our code is already dynamically using the y maximum, everything should still be working exactly the same. So let's go back into our scene and see if the highest value is 20% under the top of our graph. So let's see, here's my graph and there you go. The highest value is this one, which is pretty much 20% from the top of our graph. Okay, great. Now, depending on the graph, you might also want to have the minimum dependent on the lowest value rather than zero. So let's do that now. So first, let's calculate the lowest value. So let's make up here a float for the y minimum, which instead of starting off at zero, let's start down a list of zero. Same thing for our maximum. We start off the maximum and minimum to the very first value. And here, let's set our minimum. So if the value is under our y minimum, then set the y minimum to our value. And now in here, on our buffer on the top, we are currently increasing the maximum by 20%. But now, instead of increasing by 20% of the maximum, we want to increase by 20% of the difference between the maximum and the minimum. This way, the buffer is always pretty much the same size. If you were to base it on the maximum, and the maximum was very high, let's say 1000, but the minimum was 500, you would have a huge buffer on top. So we need to increase the buffer based on the difference between those two. So y maximum equals the y maximum plus the y maximum minus the y minimum multiplied by 0.2f. So we're going to increase the y maximum by 20% of the difference between the two. And now for our y minimum, we want to do the same thing except decrease it. Now down here, when we're calculating the y position for our dots, we need to reduce the value by our minimum so our normalized value is still correct. So in here, the y position is not gonna be just the value list, rather that minus the y minimum. So essentially the y minimum is serving as a zero and divide by y maximum minus y minimum. Okay, so this corrects our normalized value. So let's go back into our scene and see if the values are correct. Okay, there you go. You can see we have a 20% buffer on top, 20% buffer on the bottom. And the graph is no longer starting from zero. But as you can see, the labels are incorrect. So let's fix that now. So down here, the labels for the X, those are working exactly as they should, but the Y need to be different. Now the difference is not on their actual position. So this position is actually still perfectly fine. The only thing that will change is the value that we set to our axis label. So the value up here will be based on the y minimum plus our normalized value, which goes from zero to one, except it's not multiplied by maximum, rather the maximum minus the y minimum. So I have a base on the minimum and the normalized value multiplied by the difference between the two. So let's see if our axes labels are correct. And there you go. As you can see, the highest value is 98. So it's just under 103 and you got a buffer of about 20. And the lowest value is 5 and it goes under by about 20. Obviously, it is up to you whether you want to scale it downwards or start at zero. It depends on what type of graph you are creating. Now, let's test our code with some random values. In order to do that, first we need to add some cleanup on our graph. 
Right now we're creating game objects but never actually destroying them. So for testing, let me modify the list and then show it again. So I'm going to modify the first index and instead of being a five, let's say 20 and then show the exact same thing. So right now it should incorrectly display two dots on the beginning. Yep, there you go. And since the first one was the lowest, the whole thing is actually shifted. So obviously we don't want this to be duplicate. We just want to show one graph at a time. So let's make sure we delete the previous game objects before spawning the new ones. So up here, let us simply create a private list of game object, game object list on our awake. Let's instantiate our list. And down here on our show graph, let's first destroy all the objects on this list before spawning new ones. So I'm going to go for each game object, game object in game object list, and I'm going to destroy that game object. Then I'm going to clear my game object list. Okay, so we're cycling through the game object list, destroying all of them and clearing them. Now, when we go down here, when we create game objects, we need to actually add them. So let me add the circle game object. Let's modify the dot connection to return our game object. So in here, game object dot connection game object equals dot. And I'm going to go game object list and add the dot connection. I'm going to add the label. So label x dot game object. Same thing for the dashes. And same thing for these labels. Okay, so we are now adding every instantiated game object into my game object list. So let's see if we have fixed the issue. Yep, there you go. We are now seeing only one graph. The first game objects are being destroyed before we are spawning the second ones. So now in order to make sure that our scaling is working correctly, let's set up our graph with random values. So back up here, we want to set up the value list with random values and show the graph again. So in here, we're going to use the function periodic from the CodeMonkey utilities, which as always, you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And I'm going to create, it will trigger an action every, let's say half a second. Now that action will, first of all, clear the value list to remove our previous values. Then I'm going to cycle less than, let's say 15 values. And I'm going to add value list dot add. Let's just pick a random value. So random dot range between let's say zero and 500. And we want to use the unity engine dot random dot range. And finally, we're going to show the same graph. Okay, so now we should first see the first graph and then every half second, we should display a new graph with random values. This way we should be able to see if our scaling is correctly working. Okay, let's hit play and there's my first graph and second, third and so on. And as you can see, the scale is correctly. Everything is always within 20% of the bottom and 20% of the top. So regardless of what values we feed, we can always view the graph on our screen. So there you have it. Our graph now dynamically resizes the scale based on the values that it receives. In the next video, we're going to cover dynamically modifying our horizontal scale. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.